Research shows that breathing exercises can be useful at reducing stress and anxiety, but the effect sizes are quite small. And according to this study right here, utilizing deep nasal breathing techniques has not been shown to be that effective for improving something like obstructive sleep apnea. But all of these studies have a fatal flaw. And this fatal flaw is something that is carried out by so many people who are coaching breathing. And it may be limiting your gains that you might be receiving from various breathing exercises, whether it's more meditative or whether it's utilizing breathing to gain mobility. What strategy is that? We know that we shouldn't be using our necks and breathing really loud to pull air in and out, but the way people try to coach breathing to minimize that goes against the normal biomechanics. You know what I'm talking about, where you gotta put one hand on your tummy, one hand on your chest, breathe only into the belly. Anytime I see someone do that, this is what I wanna do to them. My God, he hit him with the stunner. Because it's not the way that we are biomechanically built to breathe. When you breathe in, your body has to make room for more air. So it has to expand in all directions. That's not just the stomach and the pelvis where the abdominal contents move as the diaphragm descends, but also the rib cage has to get bigger in all directions to make room for the lungs to get bigger with air. When you belly breathe only, that limits the degree of rib cage movement. So the upper portions of the lungs don't fill as well as the lower portions. Oftentimes what will happen then in this case is there'll be increased back musculature activity, pushing the rib cage more forward so you can at least put the air somewhere. But when that happens, I have altered pressure within the thorax and the abdominal wall, which normally should be one to one. When you belly breathe, there's a mismatch between them. That's gonna impact the stiffness that you should be able to generate within the spine when you're lifting heavy loads. And that's why belly breathing is utterly useless. There's really not any one time in which that's effective. We need the rib cage to expand in all directions so the lungs can fill. And that will also help the upper airway, the airway within the neck, expand in all directions as well. So what do we do instead? And that's what the rest of this video is gonna go into. I'm gonna show you the breathing strategy that you should utilize through various tasks because it is task dependent. So you can maximize your range of motion gains, get better gas exchange, and make sure you reap all of the benefits of breathing. You've probably seen various breathing techniques and exercises telling you you have to inhale for four seconds, exhale for four, pause after the inhale, forcefully exhale. Make sure you're thinking about this, stop. Because when we're going about our day, breathing really should be an automatic and unconscious process that we're not thinking about all that much. Because with normal, quiet breathing, the diaphragm descends, it causes a slight expansion in the rib cage, and it pushes the abdominal contents down. And the exhalation occurs because of passive recoil of the diaphragm. So it contracts, it then recoils back up. That helps squeeze the air out of the lungs, so then we exhale. So when you're quietly breathing throughout the day, we want to facilitate a strategy that promotes that passive activity, something that's very low tension and low effort. Before I tell you what that is, we have to talk about what it's not, and that is mouth breathing. Mouth breathing has a ton of negative things associated with it, namely lower nitric oxide concentrations, increased anxiety symptoms, abnormal facial dental development, cardiovascular disease, bad breath, headaches, hypertension, sleep apnea, tooth decay, increased risk of respiratory infections, and reduced brain oxygenation, which may impact certain cognitive functions. So unless you want all of those symptoms, you probably don't wanna be mouth breathing on the regular unless it's really intense exercise. But how should we breathe? If you're not talking to someone and you're just chilling like Bob Dylan throughout the day, you want to incorporate nasal breathing, which has a ton of health benefits. Namely, it increases nitric oxide production, which helps dilate blood vessels and the bronchi, which 
help uptake oxygen within the lungs. It humidifies the air, which reduces the stress load on the lungs, and it limits inhaled pathogens and dust. But if you don't nasal breathe with proper technique, you may have increased nasal resistance, and that could be a contributing factor to why you're mouth breathing in the first place. Ideally, the tongue should sit up on the roof of the mouth. When the tongue is on the roof of the mouth, it will pull down on the roof, which is also the floor of the nose. If I pull down on the floor of the nose, there's increased space for me to breathe in and out through my nose, which reduces nasal resistance. So with nasal breathing, there are three keys. You have to keep the entire tongue up to the roof of the mouth. You have to make sure your lips are gently closed and then you are breathing quietly in and out through the nose, as if Michael Myers from the Halloween movies was close by, but you're hiding from him. Nasal breathing is a useful, low tension, low effort strategy, but I'm sure you've heard of using breathing exercises to enhance mobility. Is nasal breathing effective for that? No. And the reason why is because if you're trying to gain range of motion, you have to move more air than is typically moved with nasal breathing. And the reason why we're even using breathing in the first place with mobility drills is because if I can increase the amount of expansion of the rib cage or the pelvis or even the neck, I now can create a greater stretch or an eccentric position of the muscles, which can increase the amount of motion that I have available. But if I'm only nasal breathing, I don't really hit those bigger excursions. So how should I breathe when I'm trying to perform a mobility drill or trying to increase my flexibility? For that, we wanna keep the inhale exactly the same. Tongue on the roof of the mouth, lips are closed, and I'm quietly breathing through the nose. This is important because we still want to limit overall tension. If you forcefully inhale through the nose, trying to pull as much air in as possible, your muscles increase their activity to try to pull the air in faster. But if there's increased muscle activity, now I'm going to be limiting the amount of motion that I can express because when muscles tense, space within the body reduces. So the real change then when it comes to mobility drills and breathing is actually within the exhale. The exhale is going to be open mouth and slow. You wanna to try to get the air out a bit longer than you would with a nasal breath, but you don't wanna force it and get all of it out because if you get all the air out, what's gonna happen is you're gonna recruit the bigger muscles and the abs, and that's gonna limit the amount of motion that can be gained within the torso and the pelvis. So as you're exhaling during mobility drills, think long and slow, and you should also feel the lower portion of the abdomen, I'm talking below the belly button, getting smaller over time. If you want some extra credit, you should keep a little bit of that ab tension during the subsequent inhale. That will allow for better expansion in the rib cage because it's gonna limit accessory muscles, the big muscles in the neck and the chest, lifting the rib cage up as a unit. But even that breathing strategy has its limits. It's usually best done if you're holding one position. But what happens if you're moving? What happens if you're lifting some weights? How should you breathe during that? You want to use a strategy that facilitates the eccentric or lengthening phase of the exercise and a strategy that facilitates the concentric or shortening phase. So like if you're squatting all the way down, that's the eccentric phase. And then coming up out of the squat is the concentric phase. You can use breathing to get even more out of each of those phases of a lift. And that's because when I inhale, the body becomes more eccentric in general to make more room for air. And when I exhale, the body becomes more concentric to squeeze the air out of the lungs. So generally, what you want to do is you want to perform a nasal inhale during the eccentric portion. And then during the concentric, that's when you want to perform a full exhale through the mouth so it can increase tension within the muscles. But that goes out the window once the lift starts to get pretty heavy. I'm talking like three rep max or less. And that's because when you exhale and air leaves your body, at a certain point, you will have a reduction of pressure within the thorax and the abdomen. That will limit spinal stiffness. 
If I'm trying to perform a max effort lift, I want to have my body stiff because that's going to allow me to move more weight. So we actually don't want air to leave our bodies during that state. For that, you want to perform a Valsalva maneuver, which is exhaling forcefully against a closed glottis or keeping your mouth shut. What this does is it allows pressure to build up within the thorax and the abdomen, allowing you to lift heavier weights. But you want to do it differently than most people coach it. You see, when most people coach the Valsalva maneuver, they take a big mouth inhale, try to pull in as much air as humanly possible, and then they exhale against that closed glottis. But as we talked about before, Breathing into the belly is going to limit the load distribution and make it more focal. I also would argue that you don't get as good of pressure generation because I'm not filling the lungs up in all directions. You can't just focus on intra-abdominal pressure. Intrathoracic pressure is equally as important. Belly breathing is going to negatively impact that. Instead, we want the exact same breathing strategy that we did with prior lifts right at the beginning. Meaning, I'm gonna perform a silent nasal inhale, and then I'm gonna exhale slowly through the mouth first, ensuring that I get a little bit of abdominal activity to perform a slight brace, and I alter lower rib cage position. From there, I'm gonna take another inhale through the nose, but a little bit more than I normally would during a typical inhale. And then I'm gonna hold my breath on the way down and on the way up, exhaling against a closed mouth to increase pressure so I can lift heavier weights. Now, maybe you've tried these strategies, but the nasal breathing piece is still really tough. You might actually have to do something a bit more in depth to get your nose to open up and make that occur more easily. For that, I'd check out this video right here where I deep dive into how to stop mouth breathing for good and to make nasal breathing more comfortable.